from Los Angeles to a worldwide audience, this is Boaz Power TV, where we take your life to the next level. Now, internationally known speaker and author, here's Boaz. Hi, welcome to the Power Show. You are part of the Power Nation, and I'm so delighted that you're here. Whenever people ask us, how's life, how's business? In my seminars all over the world, I suggest one word with enthusiasm, unbelievable. Nobody will know what you're up to, but they'll think you're doing great. Here we help you to improve your relationships, your attitude, your finances, and your career, taking your life to the next level. This is episode number 132 on Boaz Power TV. And I call this one, was it culture shock or was it love? You know, what would happen if you took an average American family to Africa for nine days to live with a traditional tribe in the barren desert of Kenya. We're talking about a middle-class suburban family from New Jersey that includes the parents, a teenage daughter, and two younger sons. At their destination, there was no electricity, plumbing, or phones. Would your comfortable American family be willing to undertake such a drastic culture shock for a few days? Well, the Palmers of New Jersey did, and their adventure was chronicled in an adventure series on the National Geographic television channel just a few years ago. The program was called Worlds Apart, and it transplanted American families into remote cultures to experience authentic lifestyles. This was a crash course in cultural diversity as the program transported a different American family each week to another part of the globe. Here's a rundown of some of their episodes. A Birmingham, Alabama family was sent to a farming village in Ghana. A Virginia family traveled to one of the uh, Trobriand Islands about 100 miles off the coast of uh, New Guinea in the South Pacific. A Detroit family went to the splendid heights of Peru's Andes Mountains and a North Carolina family was sent to live with a tribe of former headhunters in the jungles of Malaysia. I found this fascinating program one night. The episode I saw dealt with the Palmer family from New Jersey, as I mentioned. Thinking this would be an interesting experience for them and their kids, the parents applied to National Geographic. As the Palmers found out, the title of the program, Worlds Apart, is very apropos. After a long plane flight from New Jersey, they found themselves in the capital of Kenya. From there, it was a shorter flight on a smaller plane to a patch of barren desert within the country. Getting off the plane on a makeshift runway in the middle of nowhere, they met the Orguba family. Although most of the tribes in Africa are still quite primitive, the Orgubas are part of a tribe that has been westernized to some extent. They speak English. That aspect helped the Palmers feel welcome upon their arrival. Stripped of all their material possessions and hectic schedules, the Palmers quickly underwent a dramatic transformation. Their accommodations, as kindly prepared by the Orguba family, consisted of a simple, and, uh, a simple hut where everyone would sleep on blankets on the ground. No electricity, no phones in this camp. This was a drastically different lifestyle that could trace its roots back thousands of years. Toilet facilities were primitive and there was an abundance of mosquitoes and bugs. By the second day, the excitement of the adventure for the Palmers was replaced by some harsh realities. Mr. Palmer was instructed by Mr. Orguba that the men tend to the goats and the women take care of all the food. He seemed to deal with his role better than Mrs. Palmer. She had to help Mrs. Orguba prepare meals from whatever existed in the surroundings and quickly found the experience to be a lot of work. The kids missing the comfortable surroundings of their New Jersey home got edgy quickly. The younger son missed his video games and the teenage daughter was disgusted by the fact that everything they ate had sand particles in it. On the fifth day, everyone witnessed Mr. Orguba slaughtering a goat that became one source of the family's food supply. The kids found the sight of a goat having its throat cut difficult to watch. The Palmer's middle son was asked if in order to be declared a warrior, he would sip just a little bit of the goat's blood from a cup. He did, found it disgusting, but seemed proud to now be an African warrior. 
At some point, perhaps the fourth or fifth day, as everyone in the family was getting eager to go back to their comforts of America, something happened. Maybe it was the fact that Mr. Orguba would take the youngest son for walks whenever he would get upset and just talk with him. Maybe it was Mr. Orguba's, Mrs. Orguba's kind and understanding reaction to the Palmer's middle son when everyone else was very upset with him. He had unconsciously scooped the dog's drinking bowl in a freshwater well and temporarily contaminated the village's source of drinking water. Maybe it was the peacefulness and love that existed in the middle of nowhere among primitive, primitive conditions. Well, whatever it was, the Palmers found themselves undergoing a dramatic transformation while they developed deep bonds and respect for a people who lived a drastically different life. Well, by the ninth day, when it was time to leave, the two families hugged each other and took pictures together. They vowed to write to each other, send pictures, and keep in touch. The most powerful part of the program, I found, was the small plane taking off from the barren landing strip in the desert. Close-up shots in the plane of each of the Palmers, parents as well as the three kids, showed each one crying. The loving bond they had created with the Orgubas was so powerful that it hurt to leave. I encourage you to look up this program. I'm not sure if it's still running, the National Geographic program. Maybe you, like me, will get the underlying lesson. Although this African tribe lacked all the material possessions we have, they had two emotional possessions that are priceless, love and peace. So here is an affirmation of peace for this message on Boaz Power TV. You may want to write it down. It says, I focus on the non-material possessions in life, love and peace. Once again, I focus on the non-material possessions in life, love and peace. Thank you for joining me. If you like these messages and many people around the world find them highly beneficial, please do me a favor, forward this to five people you know, suggest they go to my website, boazpower.com. And they can also subscribe to the free weekly broadcast on Boaz Power TV. You are special. You are unique. You are destined for greatness. I see it in you. You are a champion. Have a powerful day. This has been Boaz Power TV. To comment, see other episodes, or to subscribe to this free broadcast, go to our blog at boazpower.com. That's boazpower.com. We're here to take your life to the next level.